Uh, let's see. It is Friday, April 13th. Oh, boy. That's right. It's Friday the 13th. Awesome. Well, it's a good thing. I didn't really know that all day. Um, I've had a wonderful Friday the 13th. Knock. Knock on wood. Anyway, so I hope you all are having a good day as well. Hopefully your Friday the 13th wasn't too crazy. Uh, we are here again. I'm going to run through a little bit about what I did since I last talked to you and um, talk about some things that I hope happen in the next week. So uh, let's see. Okay. Um, let's start with the giant project. The epic fantasy Reign of Dust is progressing. Uh, slow but steady. I did pretty good this past week. I got um, 5,800 words done on that project, which is, I think, the most I've done in a week in a while now. Um, the exciting thing is that I just realized today that I only have about 10 chapters left uh, in that book, and then the first draft will be done, which is insane. Um, it's still sitting at about 130,000 words. I chopped out quite a bit when I kind of restructured the whole book. So there's a lot more words that I've written um, than that, but 130,000 is about where it sits with the stuff that I'm leaving in from before and then all the new stuff I've been writing in the last few months. And it's probably going to end at about 180,000. So I'll probably have about 50,000 more to write to the end, but I'm just going to focus on that 10 chapter number that's Sounds a lot better to me than 50,000 more words. Um, I'm still not entirely sure uh, when I will have that done. I don't really have a projected deadline anymore. Every time I make one, I just blow right past it. So I've kind of um, just decided to not measure it that way anymore. From now on, I'm just going to, uh, you know, set my sights on making a set amount of progress every week. And then when it's over over. Um, originally my release date for that book was going to be September of this year. I don't know if I'm gonna make that, um, I probably could make that uh, publishing date if I just wanted to release book one and then wait who knows how long for book two to come out. But I would prefer to have most of the trilogy entirely done before I publish book one. So in that case, Considering I haven't even started the book two draft yet, it will likely not be in September this year. But we'll see. We'll just see. Like I said, I kind of am not setting hard deadlines at this point. I'm going to wait and, and see how it goes. So that's where that project is at. Um, as for book two in that trilogy, um, I did move the book two cover design back to May 1st. So just a few weeks That'll give me some time to finish plotting out the storyline for that one and to come up with a back cover copy because they need that for the paper book, uh, paperback version, obviously. So that's what I'll be doing. One of the things I'll be doing in the next few weeks is trying to come up with the back cover copy for book two of the Epic Fantasy Trilogy. And the exciting news is, is that I have a title finally for book two. Uh, if you are a member of my mailing list, then you will know about this. Well, you will know that I asked your opinion for a book, for a title on book two. Um, that is something that I do with my list. So if you would like to have input on my future books in various ways, such as helping me come up with a title, you can join my mailing list. I'll put a link in the video description. But, um... Yeah, my list has helped me decide on the size of um, my paperback books when I publish them. And uh, they helped me decide on some back cover copy stuff for book one. Um, and now they have helped me come up with the title for book two. So, pretty excited about that. Um, hmm. I don't think I'm going to tell you what book two's title is yet because I haven't told my list the results of the poll yet. So... I will tell them first because, you know, they're special. They get up, they get cool stuff first. And then probably next week or maybe end of April at the latest, I will let everyone else know. Yay! 
Um, so that is that. Um, the other things I've been up to recently, I'm still working on client edits for the military sci-fi novel. I got about 12 pages done as far as that goes. Um, and then I also, something that I do sometimes when I edit for clients is um, make little videos of live edits while I'm doing it so I can kind of explain my thoughts in certain areas. So I went ahead and made a little short live editing video um, for my current client that I'll be sending along to him with the edits on his manuscript. So that was kind of fun. Um, eventually, I would like to put stuff like that into a self-editing um, course for authors. So um, I'm still kind of struggling with how exactly the layout of something like that would go and exactly what to cover since there is so many things um, that could potentially be covered. I'm trying to focus on the most common things that I see popping up and over and over again as I've been freelance editing the last few years. So we'll see where that goes though also. Oh, uh, let's see, as far as the other projects, um, there's my collaboration project, which we did some character work end of last week. We hashed out our antagonist more for the book, which was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, that project was just a lot of fun. So we um, got some of the antagonist details straightened out, some of the uh, other character backstories hashed out a little bit in more detail. Uh, and then we made a plan as to how to come up with the remaining characters' backstories. And uh, we're both pretty busy right now, but we're going to touch base again here in a few weeks when things calm down and go from there on that. As for the dilemma that I mentioned last week um, in should I make my next book series steampunk or thriller or both and put it in the shared universe that I'm working on. Uh, I have received a few opinions on that, um, but nothing solid so far. I'm leaning towards one direction, but I would love to hear more opinions on that. So if you are a reader and would like to weigh in, you can leave a comment on this video or last week's video. Uh, that is in update three if you want to go back and check that out. Right at the beginning of that video, I go into the details on that. So if you missed it, you can go back, watch that, let me know what you think. Very interested in your opinions. Other than that, um, I did post a draft chapter to Patreon end of last week for my patrons. So, oh no, that was the beginning of this week. Wow, this week has felt very long. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, early this week, I posted a draft chapter of Reign of Dust on Patreon for my patrons. Um, and if you're interested in seeing early chapters or getting free books or seeing my covers really early, um, definitely go over to Patreon, become a patron, and you'll get to see all that stuff. Like, really early, like I said. Um, my patrons are seeing basically this entire book as it's being written, and they will also be the first to see the amazing cover that I've been hanging on to since last November. It's been very difficult to keep it in, but um, I don't want to release it until, you know, it's attached to a book that people can buy, because I'm afraid they're going to see the awesome cover, want to buy the book, and it won't even be out yet. So I'm going to wait on that as hard as it is. Very hard to be patient, but I'm trying. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see podcast is still rocking along. Um, I will be doing more edits on that um, this weekend. And next week we have uh, another episode, episode 21 I believe it is, coming out Monday the 16th. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about the importance of uh, routine and ritual to writing. So that's pretty cool. As well as have a new interview with another writer mom. Always awesome to hear different people's different processes. It's very cool how everyone has something different that works for them, I think. So, good stuff there. Um, and I think it was two weeks ago I mentioned uh, Joan Assis and Nick Stevenson have a course that they made together called Story Engines. Ironically, or coincidentally, whichever, um, I just got an email this week 
talking about um, them, their free training for that um, course. So they have, I think, a video series of three videos where they walk you through actually some of the course content, I think. Um, and that's going on like this week. So I will see if I can find a link to those free videos and put it in the video description also. So if you were interested a few weeks ago when I mentioned that, um, they are gearing up for enrollment again because they always have the free training videos come out before they open enrollment. So that is coming up soon. Um, I will link to the free training videos because it is very helpful. <clears throat> and then um, whenever the course is open again, I'll link to that too. <coughs> but um, that uh, way of, of plotting and writing, I think, is very promising uh, if you are a hardcore plotter like me. I showed you all those index cards that one week. That was all of my scenes. Um, this week, a huge part of why I managed to write so many words was because I had plotted out the rest of the book. So I have all the way to the end of the book scene summarized now on the virtual index cards in Scrivener. And so now when I am ready to write, I just read my little summary. Um, and then just pretty much dive right in. So it really, for me, makes a huge difference as far as writing speed. Um, and if, as long as I have those scenes plotted, I don't have writer's block ever. I know that I need to plot more if I ever become stuck in my writing because that's my brain freaking out because it doesn't know where it's supposed to go. So it just refuses to write until I figure it out. Once I have those scene summaries written out, no problem. It's crazy the difference it makes, but uh, if you are having a lot of trouble with your own books, that could be something that helps you, possibly. Maybe you're a hardcore plotter and didn't know it. And um, for you readers out there, this is <laughs> what writers go through to get their words in and make uh, their books. So it's a very common thing. Um, it's tough sometimes. Um, and let's see, I think, oh, yes. So my newest fascination recently, actually, has nothing to do with writing or plotting or books. Um, it actually relates to green smoothies. Uh, so I guess it is sort of related to writing. Writing is a very sedentary thing, right? You're sitting at a desk, at a computer, or somewhere. You're just sitting, sitting on your butt a lot. Um, and I do know some writers have a treadmill or pedals under their desk that helps them get some movement in while they're writing, which is really good. And I think I'm going to actually get some pedals put under my desk to help because I do get restless, you know, after sitting for like three hours straight. It's not good. Uh, and my non-writing job is also a desk job. So I really have no physical outlet, basically, um, in any given day. So I've really tried to get better at, um, you know, watching my physical movement, exercise, and diet recently because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So the problem was um, I don't have a lot of time, obviously. Uh, and I happened to come across um, this uh, awesome lady. She goes by Betty Rocker, but she has a 30-day and 90-day training program that are all the high intensity interval training workouts. So they're only like 15, 20 minutes a day. Um, and that was ideal for me because I was like, great, that's all the time I have in a day, maybe, you know. So I've been doing a lot better at making time for those workouts, which I've actually really enjoyed, um, surprisingly. One, because they're so short. <clears throat> and two, because each one is different. And I found that in previous exercise routines, I get bored really easy. So the varying it up every day and within each workout really helps keep my attention, I guess. I don't know, but it's working for me. I'm very happy with it so far. Um, I haven't been doing it that long, so I can't report any stellar results or anything. Um, I am very sore a lot, <laughs> but you know, that's fine. I guess that means something's happening, right? Um, and then green smoothies were the other awesome thing about this program. Um, she has a meal plan, which I've done some of, but uh, through her, I found greensmoothies.com, which has pages and pages 
of green smoothie recipes. And I know some people, when they hear green smoothie, they think that's disgusting. Uh, but I am telling you, these things, they taste like fruit smoothies. They are delicious. And uh, they're also good for you. And I can't get enough of them because it takes about five minutes to make them. And I have smoothies for like, you know, one to three days, depending on how much I make at one time. I'm set for breakfast all of those days. I've even um, done some for lunches. And uh, on that side, it tells you what to add to make sure that they have everything you need to make them a meal replacement. So, it's awesome. And they're so good. And they're so easy. And I love it. So, I just had to share that um, because I'm really excited about it. Never thought I would be that excited about a green smoothie, but I am. So, there's that. Uh, so that's what I'm doing to, you know, try to take care of myself. Self-care, very important. Very important. Um, and the other thing I've been doing a lot better with recently is staying off social media so much. Um, which I say because I have been insanely productive this week. Insanely. On all areas of life. And this morning I was trying to figure out what exactly was I doing differently you know, to, to make myself so productive for so long without crashing and burning, which I kind of have been waiting for that exhaustion to kick in, uh, this week and it, it hasn't. So the only thing I can think is that I have barely touched social media all week. Um, uh, when I do go, I'm very, very, it's very quick, like five minutes at a time. That's it. Make a few replies, you know, maybe make a post here and there and that's it. Um, and I don't check my phone first thing in the morning, and I don't check my phone before bed, which is one of the, um, things that Benjamin Hardy suggests, who is a guy that I've been following for some time. He writes a lot of articles on Medium. Um, I'll put a link to his stuff in the video description also, because he has a, like, a morning strategy and, like, a bedtime strategy that's actually really, really helped me out, um, feel way more focused throughout the day and get a lot more done, like I've said. So that's also awesome. Um, so there's a few uh, non-writing related cool things going on. But I think I should probably go now because otherwise I'm just going to keep blabbing and blabbing and bore you to tears. So anyway, um, that is all for this week. Next week I will check in again. I will let you know how Rain of Dust is going. I am on track so far or 20,000 words in April for my cat camp nano goal. So I will check in next week with you. We'll see how that's going. I'll let you know how the whole exercising green smoothie thing is going. See if I still like it as much as I do now. Um, check out all the links in the video description. I will post lots of good stuff for you there. Um, and don't forget, if you want to see basically my books as I write them or see the covers super early or get free books, you can join my mailing list or become a patron on Patreon. I'll put those links down below also. So until next week, uh, happy reading and I will see you later. Bye!